look at the last four, the multiple choice at this stage of the June 2015 Regents uh, exam for geometry. Uh, 21 through 24. 21 is again in the special right triangle category, cluster B, which is where it begins to move from dilation properties into similarity. This is definitely a similarity question. It's a triangle and they give you some pieces and parts and, and ask to work with the knowledge that sides are proportional. So we're dealing with the fact that perimeters are proportional as well. In 22, we get SRT again, uh, special right triangle, or not special right triangles, but, well, they're in there, but similarity and right triangles. In A, we're going to still work with uh, the cluster A on dilations. We're going to look at how, when we dilate a line, how does that impact its equation? A great question, well covered in our notes. Uh, in 23, we're looking at geometric measurement and uh, we're looking at the formula for a circle, pi r squared, and how we can use it by cutting up into pieces and fitting them so that it makes a parallelogram and we use the parallelogram formula to help us get the formula. We use this limit argument to go after it and it's a nice question, a classic question, but once again, bam, in, in our materials. And the last one, 24, is a congruence, uh, and B is the cluster about congruence. And here we are given some information about triangles, and it says uh, what is sufficient to know uh, to make them congruent. So a classic congruence problem, well handled in what we do as well. Let's take a look at the questions now and the materials that support them. Question 21 says we got two similar triangles. This is actually a nice problem, works nicely with uh, giving you notation and then some ugly looking triangles that aren't obvious who goes to who and the numbers aren't friendly. All good situations for a problem. We do learn though that AC would correspond to DC, so it's 12 is to 7. Now we'd like to know the perimeter of this guy, but we don't know this length and we don't know that length, so we can't solve for either of them to help us in the problem. But we do know that the perimeter of the big one is proportional to the perimeter of the small one. And so we say 12 is to 7 as the perimeter, 30, is to P, the small perimeter, and it solves out nicely. Lots of good support for this one in the notes. We just recently did one like this, and I showed some of the resources, but I'll, I'll show a different group here. Um, here are some good examples of that same kind of questioning about uh, solving for, you know, X or Y. What's the missing piece in the, in the similar, given that triangles are similar? And there's a bunch of different varieties, the uh, ones that are inside of each other and ones that, you know, are hard to distinguish who goes to who, so they have to know large goes to large, medium goes to medium, small goes to small. Lots of good uh, types of questions and examples, very similar to the one that gets requested here. Question 22 is all about uh, dilating as well. Um, it is in a good standard location for clustering. And what we basically learn about dilations is when we dilate, we, we continue to receive parallel lines. Dilations lock in angles, therefore we get parallel lines. So we dilate a line, and it's written in this form, which makes it a little tricky, and then ask which line could be the dilation image. Great question. Well designed, uh, New York. And so... I'm looking for a slope that would match the original. So I, I moved it around a little bit. You could put it in slope intercept form if you had to, but in this form, I know a shortcut which is negative A um, over B, and I get the slope. And then I track down the other slopes and I find uh, answer one has those slopes. So a little bit tricky here because you are in a standard form and you might have to convert them to slope intercept if you don't know the standard form shortcut. This is covered though in these materials and it would help your kids definitely. So it deals a lot with uh, the concepts of parallel and so um, it, it says its standard is in SRT, similarity right triangles, and because there's a dilation it definitely is a part of that but it's also a part of later standard in GPE uh, e, where we deal with coordinates 
and we talk about parallel lines and the relationship of slopes. And uh, I just wanted to show that, you know, we deal with not only just slope intercept form, but we do standard forms and talk about a shortcut that can be used to find slope quickly. And definitely that skill would have been very handy in this question. Uh, we talk about different kinds of slopes, parallel and perpendicular ones. What would those slopes be? We look at setting up equations of lines, you know, parallel and perpendicular slopes. And certainly we've dealt with the idea that when you dilate, things stay parallel and that the angles are fixed. And so connecting those ideas would be pretty straightforward for a student with these materials. Question 23 gives you a radius and some information about cutting a circle into small pieces. This is specifically stated in the standard, an obvious direct question to that standard. Uh, it's definitely in the right cluster. And the idea is that if you put them piece by piece like this, you form a parallelogram, and that the parallelogram is approximately the radius tall. And notice the little bumps along here, that's half of a circumference. The other half is over here. So this base times height, this base times height would be pi r, and this is pi r, half of a circumference, times the height, which is r, pi r squared. But anyways, they wanted to know what x is, which is just half of a circumference, so it's pi r, where r is 5, and we get close to 16. Good question, straight to the point. Um, we should be ready for that. You just need to see these diagrams to understand that uh, basically we've got it exactly the way uh, you would want to have it. Um, it talks about, you know, this whole idea of to a limit, and so we do big pieces and smaller and smaller, and then talk about how it forms the parallelogram, and as we get smaller and smaller, it becomes more and more parallelogram-like. We establish that formula and where it comes from. Uh, there's an activity that actually as you cut these things out and paste them and try them. Uh, we hit this uh, particular question right on, and students would see it and know exactly what to do because this is how we handle the problem. Question 24 focuses on the idea of congruence. It's perfectly placed um, into uh, the congruence area, and we're establishing things that are congruent. I think this is actually a C if I were to look it up. Um, looking at congruence in the final multiple choice question, it's a congruence question in the B standard, uh, which is perfectly placed. That's where all of the discussion about uh, congruence takes place. And they're basically wanting to establish congruence based on some givens. Here they give you two sides. Of course, side side is never enough. Here they give you three angles and Angles alone are not enough. Here, I love you, uh, New York. Good question. This says, I'm able to produce a rigid motion that maps, you know, A, on, a B onto D, and so on. And that, of course, is our answer because we define congruence as a group of rigid motions that map one onto the other. So, well done. Well-designed question. And then this one's kind of like that, but it just doesn't map enough information to say it's congruent. This is a mapping of side, 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 and so life is good. Well-designed question, easily handled by our uh, materials. Question 24 is all about congruence, but really at the heart of it, before we get to the physical proving of congruence, uh, we need kids to understand, our students to understand uh, what it means to do a congruence mapping or to be able to use isometric uh, transformations to establish that. So again, this is just part of our question bank, but here are a few examples about rigid motion and, you know, what does it mean to be rigid and, and how does that help us establish congruence? And, and then it leads to questions like this where you're given some information and says, you know, which piece of information would make it congruent by side angle side or make it congruent by HL or so again, lots of questions that are about establishing congruence based on knowledge and a diagram and some information. So this kind of question would be easy for kids who have handled this material.